All right, so this is a suggestion via a donation. The name of the video is How Dan Snyder Got Away With It. Quiet on a set. All right. Let's check it out. Let's see who this takes us, guys. It's most disturbing. No! Oh. <laughs> that was random. You two were fighting, and you yanked Festus right out of his grub truck, and now he's in the hospital. I just wanted a tamale. When I watched the show, I could see the hurt in some people's eyes, and it made me feel awful. No, it didn't. This man was the mastermind behind some of our favorite childhood shows. But oh boy, there's a dark side to this story. We're talking allegations of misconduct, mysterious exits, and a whole lot of whispers in Hollywood's corridors. And guess what? Somehow, Schneider managed to slip through the cracks, leaving everyone scratching their heads. So come on in, grab your popcorn, because we're about to spill all the tea on how Dan Schneider got away with it. Trust me, this is one roller coaster ride you don't want to miss. Bro, why, why are you in the hot tub with this, this little girl, bro? Answer that question for me immediately. But before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let's. Even though she grew up to be weird. Get started. Most in likely. the 90s, Dan Schneider became a big name at Nickelodeon, turning it into a hot spot for kids' TV. However, over time, a series of shocking claims have cast a shadow over his celebrated TV kingdom. As the brains behind hits like The Amanda Show, Drake and Josh, and iCarly, Schneider's work was under the microscope again with the release of Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV by Investigation Discovery. The drama began in 2018 when Nickelodeon and Schneider decided to go separate ways. The official word was about exploring new paths, especially as Schneider's production ventures were winding down. But as Deadline hinted, the split had deeper roots. Working for Dan was like being in an abusive relationship. There's a lot of it happens. I, I worked with an incredibly emotionally abusive producer. How safe can any kids be in that environment? Dan Schneider. Bro, not many. The fact that he instantly uh, made an attempt to get rid of all of the parents or he specifically targeted people uh, or kids specifically that uh, their parents were somewhat um, not around. Yeah, bro. I can imagine how crazy things got. You better be scared. Very down folks here. Schneider's notorious temper, grueling work days, and questionable online posts of young actresses' feet raised eyebrows. Yeah, that's weird. Nickelodeon had... I mean, generally, if you're someone who enjoys feet, I, I find you to be incredibly awkward, right? All right, so watch out. Already probed into Schneider's conduct twice. After a 2013 inquiry, he switched to delivering feedback from his office, avoiding direct contact on the Sam and Cat set. Schneider told Quiet on Set, that this move was his choice, not a restriction. Despite oh, yeah. these tensions, Schneider rolled out Henry Danger and Game Shakers for Nickelodeon. Yet another probe in 2017 examined claims of misconduct during the Me Too era. Though no misdeeds were confirmed, the investigation did spotlight his verbal hostility at work. The New York Times in 2021 depicted Schneider as a challenging figure known for his volatile nature. Concerns about him demanding messages and texting young actors outside work also emerged. Finally, Page Six reported that Schneider exited Nickelodeon with a hefty $7 million, essentially the remainder of his contract, according to the Times. However, the saga of Dan and his hidden truths didn't just fade away. Just like some people come back to justify their actions after the dust has settled, Dan did the same. On June 30, 2021, he reappeared after a three-year break in an interview with the New York Times. Dan shared that he took some time off after his Nickelodeon days to focus on personal stuff, like shedding over 100 pounds. He addressed the accusations that his shows like iCarly and Victorious had some risque jokes and that he was making the young <laughs> stars seem too grown up. Dan brushed it off, saying the humor was totally harmless. He also denied treating the actors badly and stood by his way of managing things, claiming he yeah, bro, just the, has high bro. expectations. When bro, but the problem is that every single one of them for some reason have come out and said pretty much the same thing about how terrible you were. And stood by his way of managing so. things, claiming he just has high expectations. When it came to chatting with the actors, Dan insisted, I never crossed any lines with actors, whether it's texting or anything else. That okay. should make anyone uneasy. He also mentioned that he's mellowed out a bit when it comes to giving feedback and hinted at having several new projects in the works, 
including a bold and unique TV pilot aimed at adults. But nothing really came of it, and Dan mostly stayed out of the limelight. But, as they say, the truth has a way of coming to light, and first-hand accounts from those who worked with Dan began to surface. On August 9, 2022, Jeanette McCurdy, a former star of Schneider's I, Carly, and Sam and Cat, opened up about her experiences in her debut memoir. The book quickly became a New York Times nonfiction bestseller and stayed on the list for a whole year. It sparked a lot of chatter about the behind-the-scenes drama at Nickelodeon. In her memoir, Jeanette, who played Sam Puckett, described a powerful, controlling figure she referred to only as the creator. She wrote about being pressured to drink alcohol while underage, being yelled at during a kissing scene with her iCarly co-star Nathan Cress, and being explicitly asked to wear bikinis during a wardrobe oh. fitting. Business Insider conducted an invest- Yeah, we all know who the creator is, Dan Schneider. Investigation, talking to multiple writers, actors, and crew members who worked with Schneider. While some former child actors had positive things to say, others painted a different picture. A longtime writer called the environment a maddening, disgusting, controlling little bubble. Alexa Nicholas from Zoe 101 called Schneider's set traumatizing and claimed he yelled at her in front of Nickelodeon executives when she was just 13. Daniela Monet from Victorious said the show was unusually very PC, funny, silly, friendly, chill, but there were moments that felt writers spoke about the Yeah, because they were, bro. During long, grueling workdays, female staff writers, who were few and far between on Schneider's shows, accused him of the investigation also revealed a gender discrimination and hostile workplace claim filed by the Amanda Show staff writer Jenny Klingen in 2000. Other employees claimed Schneider asked for massages from adult female colleagues. A person close to Schneider said he regrets ever asking what? anyone and agrees it was not appropriate even though it only happened in public settings. Now we're getting to the real- I mean, bro, if you're that brazen in public, like there's no telling what you actually did behind the scenes or the people you stopped um, from allowing to, to work with you, right? Uh, purely based off of things that they would not do or you perceived uh, the these people would not do. Bro, I think you are an absolute monster, bro. Feel sizzling drama that's been unfolding recently with Dan. On March 17 and 18, 2024, ID dropped a bombshell with the four-part docuseries, Quiet On Set, which aired over two nights. This series takes a deep dive into the darker side of Nickelodeon, shining a spotlight on what went on behind the scenes. Directed by Mary Robertson and Emma Schwartz, and produced by Maxine Productions under Sony Pictures Television, nonfiction, in collaboration with Business Insider, the docuseries is stirring up quite a storm. Quiet on the set features interviews with a bunch of crew members and former Nickelodeon stars, including Nicholas, Double Dare host Mark Summers, and all that cast members Giovanni Samuels and Brian Hearn. The series also brings to light some shocking revelations from the Amanda Show writers, Klingon and Christy Stratton. They share their experience of splitting a salary during the first season. Splitting Snyder a claimed salary? No say over salaries. But that's not all. They alleged that Schneider showed staff on his computer and played degrading oh. pranks on employees. The spokesperson for Schneider told BI that he's extremely sorry for his behavior that contributed to that environment, and he has grown a lot since then. That behavior is clearly wrong and not for the workplace, and certainly he would never act that way again. Of course Quiet not. on Set doesn't shy away from showcasing scenes from Nickelodeon shows that have raised eyebrows, like Nicholas accidentally spraying Jamie Lynn Spears in the face with a goo pop on Zoe 101. A representative a for Schneider pop. responded, Everything that happened on the show's Dan Ran was carefully scrutinized by dozens of involved adults and approved by the network. If there was an actual problem with the scenes that some people, now years later on, are, they would be taken down, okay. but they are not. They are aired constantly all over the world today still, enjoyed by both kids and parents. Bro. The docuseries Quiet On Set also shed light on two individuals. And you think that's what makes it better? Like a bunch of Hollywood execs sitting in an office being like, you know what, that's good, bro, Hollywood is weird. Individuals at Nickelodeon who created a dangerous environment weird. for young actors. Production assistant Jason Handy and acting coach Brian Peck. These Andy, weirdos. Who shockingly admitted to being a in his journal, Bro, ended up serving six word? years in prison for crimes involving two girls. Did As for Peck, word, he was arrested in 2003 on multiple charges of child involving an unnamed Shut actor. Up. You don't care. Surprisingly, 
41 of Peck's friends and family, including celebrities like Alan Thicke, James Marsden, and Boy Meets World stars Will Friedel and Ryder Strong, wrote letters asking for leniency in his case. These letters really? were sealed until 2023 when they were made public by Maxine Productions, one of the producers of the docuseries. That's Peck wild. was eventually That's sentenced wild. to 16 months in jail and had to register as a offender. The docuseries revealed that the actor who suffered at Peck's hands was Drake Bell, who was just 15 at the time. In Quiet oh, on yeah, Set... Bro, the Drake Bell situation is also super weird. Um, that's another one. I get it. He went through something when he was super young, and he seems to be kind of doing the same thing to another 12-year-old. All right. But all right. And an interview with Business Insider... Bell shared how he struggled to cope after Peck's arrest. He mentioned that Dan Schneider reached out and... Wait, wait, wait. Bell, who started Apologies, acting at the apology. age of five, described Nickelodeon as a factory where child actors were seen as expendable. Nickelodeon responded by saying they've put in place numerous safeguards over the years to maintain high standards and meet their audience's expectations. Bell admitted to turning to self-destructive habits but said that therapy and rehab have been crucial in preventing him from spiraling further. After the docuseries aired, Bell came to the defense of his Drake and Josh co-star Josh Peck, who faced criticism for not publicly commenting on the documentary or Bell's experiences. In a TikTok video, Bell shared that Peck had reached out to him privately and offered support. The following day, Peck posted on Instagram that he took a few days to process Quiet on Set and that he had contacted Bell privately, supporting those who spoke out about their experiences at Nickelodeon. Yeah, guys. So, with all this drama heating up, of course, Dan Schneider had to jump in and share his side of the story, trying to save some face. Yeah, I'm sorry, bro. If you have that many people coming and saying something against you, right? Like, do you think it matters whatever you really have to say by now? I mean, I understand you want to face your accusers, bro. I get that, right? But the fact is, there are so many people saying kind of the same thing, bro. Maybe you should have kept that for your lawyer or something, bro, because you did work with a lot of other weird people uh, that also liked the young ones, guys. They did, all right? Uh, so nothing in the world tells me that, honestly, things are different, right? But again, outsider looking in here. On March 19, 2024, he dropped a nearly 20-minute video where he tackled the allegations from the docuseries and said sorry for his past actions. In the video, okay. Schneider sat down with Boogle, a.k.a. Bobby Bowman, who you might remember as the groovy smoothie manager Tebow from iCarly. Dan confessed, watching over the past two nights was very difficult. Facing my past behaviors, some of which are embarrassing and that I regret. I definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology. A little more than that, He admitted bro. that his odd behavior wouldn't fly today and that the onset massages were a big no-no. I apologize to anybody that I ever put in that situation, he said. And to those who witnessed it and felt uncomfortable, I'm sorry to you too. When it came to the writer's room, Schneider was clear. No writer should ever feel uncomfortable in any writer's room, ever. He acknowledged that while inappropriate jokes can pop up in those settings, he's embarrassed he joined in and took some practical jokes too far. Right. It wasn't my fault. It was someone else. It was already going on. I just joined in. Bro, stop playing. And about those jokes in his shows that some now see as inappropriate, Schneider insisted they were written for kids. Oh, yeah? Now we have some adults looking back at them 20 years later through their lens, and they're saying, you know, I don't think that's appropriate for a kid's show, he said. If that's how anyone feels, let's cut those jokes out of the show, just like I would have done 20 years ago. Schneider also admitted that not everyone had a great time working with him, and he put it down to the stress of pumping out 40 or more episodes a year. He mentioned that watching Quiet on Set made him want to pick up the phone and say sorry to some of the people who shared their not-so-great experiences. He admitted he'd do a lot of things differently now. The main thing I'd change is how I treat... Yeah, I mean, listen, it's just because the, the times have changed. Uh, that's the only reason why you're saying, to be honest, uh, that you'll do things differently now. That's it. Uh, times are different. The things that you could have gotten away with in the late 80s, 90s, early 2000s are absolutely not similar uh, to now, specifically with the advent of social media. Yes. People, everyone, he said. There were times I wasn't at my best. I lacked patience, could be cocky, 
and sometimes just straight up rude and obnoxious. Right. I'm sorry for that. I, that. I wish I could go back to the early days of my career with the growth and experience I have now and just do a better job, he added. But Alexa Nicholas wasn't having any of Schneider's apology. She blasted it in a reaction video on YouTube saying, when someone doesn't personally come to you and apologize, it's not an apology. If you hear about it through other people, it's not really an apology. That's valid. Right? An apology is to the person you hurt. She continued, I would have appreciated if Dan apologized directly to me. He's a bully, a meanie, and impacted my life. Well, oh, you called him a meanie? Right? Where's a phone call of an apology? How come you can do all of this? How can everyone do all of this but not reach out to the person they hurt? This because that would be admitting drama surround like they can say he can broadly apologize right but if he was to make a call to someone then he's blatantly admitting that he did this right it's not this apology is not the same as uh you know i i, I really truthfully mean this i am deeply sorry i i hope that you can um, you know, forgive all the crazy things in my past that we have done, name specific instances, etc. No, no, no. He's broadly apologizing to the media. He's not apologizing to you. He's trying to make himself look better just in case, um, you know, something actually comes from this. Dan Schneider and the allegations of misconduct on the sets of some of Nickelodeon's most beloved shows has certainly stirred up a lot of emotions and opinions. From the unsettling claims made by former child stars to Schneider's own attempts at damage control, there's a lot to unpack. Firstly, it's not hard to feel a sense of betrayal when thinking about the shows we grew up watching. iCarly, Drake and Josh, and Victorious were staples of many childhoods, and to hear that there might have been a darker side to their production is both shocking and disheartening. The allegations against Schneider are especially particularly disturbing. From the claims of inappropriate behavior to the allegations of creating a toxic work environment, it's important to remember that these are allegations, but where there's smoke, there's often fire. Right, that's if these the claims are true, it's a stark reminder of the power dynamics at play in Hollywood and the need for better protection for young actors. Schneider's apology video is another point of contention. Go ahead. While it's good that he's acknowledging some of his past behaviors, many feel that it's too little, too late. His claims that he was simply under pressure due to the demands of producing so many episodes per year feels like an excuse rather than a genuine explanation. The docuseries Quiet on Set has brought many of these issues to light, but it also raises questions about accountability. Schneider claims that everything on his shows was scrutinized and approved by multiple adults, which begs... Yeah, but those adults were weirdos, bro. We know that these adults that were surrounding <laughs> these shows were absolute weirdos based off of the amount of them that, are, that have been arrested, okay, <laughs> or caught with all types of nastiness on their computers, bro, okay? We know that. Stop playing. The question, why didn't anyone step in? It's a reminder that it often takes a it. village to enable or prevent misconduct. Finally, it. the support, or lack thereof, from co-stars and colleagues is another aspect to consider. For example, Drake Bell's defense of Josh Peck after he was criticized for not commenting on the docuseries highlights the complexities of navigating such public controversies. Overall, this drama has sparked a lot of conversations about the entertainment industry, the protection of child actors, and the consequences of unchecked power. It's a reminder that we must continue to advocate for safer, more transparent working and Bro, go ahead and cut that off your head, bro. All right, stop playing. You're not fooling anyone, bro. This is not a, a purposeful hairstyle. It isn't. Let's go ahead and cut that off. All right? Just try to help you out. Environments, especially for young performers. What's your that take on crazy. the Dan Schneider allegations? Do you think his apology holds weight? No. Or is it just damage control? How do you think this Girl. will change Hollywood's treatment of child actors? Most importantly, will you still watch shows like iCarly and Victorious No? Doing this? Uh, uh, no. Nah, Let me know how y'all uh, feel nah. about the situation, and then. Uh, guys, all right. So really quickly, guys. So when it comes to very specifically these shows that Dan Schneider created, I think the only one that I have ever really encountered was probably, well, like all that or something like that, or things that he actually had to do with at least. Uh, he played parts in uh, everything else past that. That's that is. Yeah, that's too. It's too new for me, bro. I'm from I was born in '86, guys. Right. Um. 
so I think that the apology was purely damage control. I don't think it really has any 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 real weight. Again, if I do think that if he actually meant it, he would have be he would be speaking to the people directly. But why would he do that? Because that's admitting that he actually did the things that they're actually accusing him of. So damage control, right? Um, but all right, listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day. Uh, that really guys before we go are you guys subscribed to the other channels logical movie reviews with mr l boyd along with mr l boyd music both are found in the description check it out